He's a guy that can really relate with the guys in terms of understanding just you know the college experience. I think Mike's 32, but he comes across as even younger than that sometimes in terms of the way he can relate to guys, which is a positive. Well, I thought Coach Morrell was 24 or 25 when I when I saw him. He looks like a young guy. He's a guy that uh, you know is on it uh, at all times and uh, you know really willing to to pay the price and do the extra. Oh, real, that's my guy, man. We, uh, that was the first one I met. He recruited me at VCU. He's a real positive and real energetic person. He always tells me to keep my head up and just keep pushing because, you know, it's a process. And I think he told me, like, it's a marathon, not a race. So just kind of continue to, like, progress slowly and I'll be fine. I mean, there's no question that uh, uh, he's a head coach in the making uh, probably sooner than later. And ESPN is seeing that as well. Mike Morrell listed as the top recruiting assistant coach that is 35 years or less. And I see the look on your face right now, and it's kind of, I guess, a proud but yet confused smile at the same time. What's your reaction, Mike? I, you know, I guess. I, <laughs> I don't really know how you rank that stuff, so. Um, I wasn't going to say that either, but I'm not but, sure how you uh, rank by that. By results. <laughs> rank that stuff by results. Yeah, number maybe. one. I mean, you got to start putting up the finger now, letting everybody know where you uh, rank. I don't know about that. Not your style? Mm hmm kind of learn from him and watch him no I don't think so what does make him successful both as a coach for this staff and out on the road when he's recruiting Mike's got a great personality uh, he's very very likable people like him uh, moms like him kids like him uh, so when we recruited uh, for instance James Banks uh, who signed with us in the fall Mike did a great job just diving in with, with, uh, with both feet into that situation, developing a great relationship with everyone involved. And sometimes it's not just about recruiting the young man, it's, it's, it's about the people around him too. And you gotta do some work there. Uh, you gotta make some calls, you gotta do some, some homework, you gotta do some research, and uh, you know, Mike's one of the best at doing that. Sometimes when you hear the label outstanding recruiter, some people think of just a salesman that comes to mind. How do you get away from that, though, and let people know that it's more about the connections, those true relationships that you're trying to build? Yeah, well, I was a GA when he was an assistant, so I learned from the best, you know, and I watched him for, you know, however many years. But, uh, you know, I think sometimes too many assistant coaches get labeled as just recruiters, yeah. you know, and he always challenges us to go out and, and don't just be that, you know, be the whole coach, be the whole person. So um, that's not something that I just try to work, you know, and try to build those relationships as best as possible. And it's worked out here, you know, and like you said, you know, James, Tevin, those guys have been guys that I've been able to develop a relationship. But it all comes back to coach, you know, and setting the table for him. Well, we try to make sure that uh, our assistants are doing everything involved in, in, in the basketball program. They, they have three primary responsibilities. Uh, they do some other things, including come on the show yeah. and some media stuff. But their three primary responsibilities are, first and foremost, our players. So Mike has three guys that he oversees on the court, off the court, academically, everything. Uh, secondly, recruiting. Uh, and that's never ending, all encompassing. You know, for instance, right now we're recruiting the class of 2016, 2017, 2018, freshman, 2019. Wow. Uh, and then thirdly, and this is very important as well, obviously, is the basketball component of it. So Mike has different areas of the game that he's in charge of. For instance, all of our baseline out of bounds offense, baseline out of bounds defense. Every time we go to the foul line, making sure we're going after that rebound, if we're defending a free throw, our full court pressure. Uh, when we trapped Oklahoma, we just watched those clips against Buddy Heald. That's something that, that Mike is in charge of, making sure that we work on. So those are the three main things for Mike and the other assistant coaches to really uh, sink their teeth into. Well, let's go back to number one and talk now about the three players, the wing players that Mike Morrell primarily works with on an individual basis. And one of those, Demarcus Holland. You can tell it was an emotional senior night for him. 132 career games, tied for the second most among active Texas players. 89 career games with starts and also earned the team's most outstanding defensive player award in each of his first three seasons on the 40 acres. So guys, let's get the clicker fired up and let's start off with Demarcus Holland and the energy because he's part of that energy brother duo with Kendall Yancey. Well, and again, this is something that most people would never think about that gets coached. Uh, but Mike uh, and, and actually one of our GAs that works with Mike uh, spend a lot of time with our guys on 
free throw line situations. Uh, and he can tell you exactly how many we've given up free throw rebounds and how <laughs> many we've got. So in this situation, DeMarcus just outwork, outworks him. And he goes after it. He gets us an extra possession. And now, this was at the end of the first half, instead of going into halftime down five, they go into halftime down three. And it might seem like a small thing, but it's two points. And we know how many close games we've been in. So, but, Mike, talk about the, the, the job and the work you do with not just the wings, but all the guys on those situations. Yeah, and that's a winning play. You know, that's something that we, we kind of term, that's a code word, the winning play. And, and DeMarcus, uh, he and Connor probably lead our team in these type of situations, just getting in there and getting a hand on a ball, making it a 50-50 ball where we can get other guys involved in order to get them in so the play. So what is it about them that allows them to do that? Is it by the position they're playing or something they are actually bringing to the table? Well, a lot of it's effort. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it's just wanting it more. And, and in this clip, you're going to see that. I mean, it's Connor and DeMarcus, two guys we just named right there. And if you freeze it, I mean, that's... <laughs> That right there, that's four. We got four purples and two white jerseys there, and they're the first to the floor. And yeah. That's that's big, and this is some of the stuff that when Coach first got here and we first got here, we want to be the first team to the floor, and there we are, so it gets us another possession. And then going way, way back for this next example, we go to the Bahamas against Texas A&M, and we see him get out on the run with a dunk. Mike, you want to talk about DeMarcus a little bit and how much you've enjoyed coaching him? Yeah, D's. I mean, for me, for my three guys, and, and that, that's typical of what D does. It's just effort. That's running the floor, you know. Mm -hmm. you, that's not talent. That, that's just effort. I mean, obviously the dunk right there. But DeMarcus, for me and my three guys, has been such an unbelievable resource because he coaches, helps coach my other two, wow. especially Tevin. You yeah. know, he's been an unbelievable influence on Tevin. And from day one, DeMarcus has been the glue, not only for my group, but in a lot of ways, I think, our team because – He's so coachable, but there's so many things behind the scenes that you never get to see. And the message that he gives me, I can relate to DeMarcus. And sometimes it's more powerful coming from him than it is from me or from coach or from anybody yeah. because he is so respected. Yeah, he's one of those yeah, He's one of those. know a lot about basketball just to watch, to know Holland is giving everything he's got when he's out there on the court. Let's get into Kendall Yancey. And, and how would you describe what you're working with when it comes to Kendall? Yeah, I think, you know, with Kendall, we're just trying to get him to be more gritty. We're trying to get him to, to sometimes we say, stay in his lane and attack where he needs to. And here, he's getting to the Big 12. Anytime we can get to the Big 12 and make a play, good things are going to happen. And here, Kendall does. And one thing he is good at is he's an athletic, strong guard who can finish when he gets there. So, yeah. against Iowa State, that was a big deal. And then here against Vandy, I mean, this is what Kendall does. He attacks. Again, he gets to the Big 12, and he's able to finish over stronger, taller guys, and that's, that's a huge thing for him, getting him to use the things that, that he can do well. And then here especially, athletic, strong, he gets into the lane, he gets us another possession, and good things happen. He's able to power it up over bigger, stronger guys. Kendall's a guy that uh, has made a lot of progress this season in terms of understanding we want him to be nasty. We want him to be aggressive. And I think he still has a couple more steps he can take with that. And you're going to see great things as he does that. How unique for you and your coaching experience has been the relationship with our next player, Tevin Mack, knowing him for as long as you've known him and now making that transition, coaching him here at the University of Texas? Uh, it's been interesting. You know, I mean, I've known Tevin for a while and, and saw Tevin, you know, as a, as a sophomore and junior. And, um, sometimes I got to step back and look at how much progress he, progress he really had. And I think, you know, coach, coach does that as well. But Tevin's a guy who's going to continually get better. Yeah. But, you know, Tevin's only 18. You know, he, he's a young pup out there sometimes, but this is what he can do. And he can really, really shoot the basketball. And as he continues to get more confident, he's going to only get better with that. Um, you know, both of these are against Iowa State. Maybe we we'll see, see if we can play them every game for Tevin. But <laughs> he likes it. another one, he stretches the floor and he's able to, to step in and make that shot. But this is what I would like to see him do more is to go in and get these opportunities because that's something he can do. He just needs to do it more. And once he gets bigger and stronger and, again, more confident, you'll see him do more of that. But uh, he's a guy that, that obviously um, – I take a ton of pride in, but and I know Coach does too because he was a guy that was at VCU and came here. Yeah. But um, he's, uh, he, he's a guy that also needs to understand sometimes that, you know, it's okay if things don't go your way. And I think he's getting better at that. As he's he's really come a long way. I'll give you an example, Lowell. His high school coach was in town over the weekend 
uh, for the game. And he hadn't seen Tevin play live. He'd obviously watched us on TV, but hadn't seen him live since last season. And he grabbed us after watching practice and after watching the game. And it wasn't one of, Oklahoma wasn't one of Tevin's best games, but he grabbed us and he said, guys, you, you don't understand how much progress this guy has made. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we're with him every day, so it's hard yeah. to it's hard to really gauge that if you're around someone every day. He said, if he can continue on the track he's on in terms of that kind of progress, man, the sky's the limit for this guy, and we, we feel the same way. Well, Mike, thank you so much for stopping by. Continued right. good luck on the recruiting trail, both of them, by the way. <laughs> still single, still single, right? <laughs> still single. Still single.